Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Tehre Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played last year. Now it began with e4 from my opponent and I respond with c6 uh, playing the Karukan defense. Opponent goes for d4. That's what you generally see when you, uh, when you are playing the Karukan. The opponent will always try to acquire the center. That's the whole thing in chess. You want to begin with an opening where you acquire the center. Uh, you will have majority of center control and that's what uh, the initial beginning fight is all about. So here I went with d5 which is the Karukan defense again uh, making sure that uh, I also fight for the center not just my opponent and here we uh, extrade off the pawns which becomes the Karukan defense exchange variation and now if you see both of us has got the, major, uh, the fair share in the center I would say none of us has the majority so i've nullified both the e4 and d4 uh, pawn push by my opponent uh, here opponent plays bishop to d3 trying to develop the bishop and then maybe the knight on to f3 and then castling on the king side uh, i also went with a knight f6 trying to defend uh, and take control of basically e4 square uh, opponent plays c3 making sure that once the knight is out on to c6 and, and the pawn is being attacked so the pawn is already defended now by placing c3 also this opens up the diagonal for the queen one one flaw with this is your knight doesn't get the natural square which is generally c3 so knight c3 is not possible now bishop can be developed uh, and then maybe knight to uh, d2 is the is the idea for the opponent here i went with bishop d7 which kind of looks strange in the beginning but it has its own merits uh, I am controlling this diagonal first of all to begin with. Uh, my knight again can still come on to c6. I can play e6 and develop the bishop, uh, dark square bishop. And uh, once I play e6, my bishop will not be hindered now because I have a, at least one diagonal to play with. Uh, generally, if you play e6 straight away or dark square bishop, uh, light square bishop uh, becomes a vulnerability from where you want to develop the bishop and if you play b6 early that can be weakening too because suddenly you lose the control of the diagonal so i went with uh, bishop to d7 opponent plays knight f3 uh, and now i play e6 opponent develops the bishop onto f4 and here i play a6 trying to make sure that the, there's no threats of bishop at all here uh, try, once i maybe maybe I am willing to exchange bishops and uh, take break open the a file for the attack uh, here opponent plays a knight to d2 and I went with knight c6 not exchanging the light square bishops there which should have been done maybe opponent plays h3 uh, and I went with h6 making sure that the bishop will not be pinning my knight after the bishop comes on to g5 uh, here my opponent castles and I went with knight h5 hitting the bishop now bishop goes back uh, defending it and I went with bishop to e7. Now if you are already liking this video I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. Uh, here uh, my opponent after bishop to e7 goes rook to e1 trying to centralize the rook. Uh, and since my king is in center so it's always good to have centralized rooks. I went with knight a5 opponent tries to kick that and again I have to come back so that was a bad move from my side maybe I was thinking to acquire uh, c4 but uh, my opponent played uh, b4 which means if I go to c4 now I will lose extra pawn after trades happen because opponent has more control on the c4 square with the knight and the bishop both controlling it uh, other way around would should have been a rook to c8 first and then going for uh, a5 and then to c4 so that I have further control on the c file which I missed here open then gains momentum and goes for knight b3 as well here I played a b6 trying to make sure the knight cannot come here and annoy me because otherwise knight comes and I take and then open will have on uh, pass pawn here on the c file open goes for a4 trying to maybe kick my knight or break open the b or a files I went with a bishop g5 trying to exchange the dark square bishop for the knight. Opponent denies that and just plays continuous uh, placing a5 here uh, trying to break open uh, and I have thought of closing the 
situation would be better for me. So I went for b5. Open gets the knight there, which the open was trying to. Uh, knight c5 is now a very good square for the knight, controlling it. Uh, yes, my king is still in the center, so it's vulnerable. And that's why if you see the engine evaluation is 2.3, 2.4 in favor of white already. It's move number 17. And then I went with queen c8. Uh, I don't know what was the purpose behind queen c8, uh, but it actually doesn't do any much. Just maybe I was trying to make a random move there. Uh, mm, I, I really don't find it uh, any helpful for a uh, black here uh, as of now. Uh, and the only way what could have happened is a knight could have maybe come on to b7, uh, threatening my queen. And then once I move the queen, then knight can come on to d7, uh, d6. Maybe that was the threat that I saw coming. So that's why I moved it. Uh, open does trade here so that uh, I have to take with the pawn. Now that queen has been deflected from d8. Uh, so I had to take, opponent now comes with the queen um, attacking the g5 pawn. Now I went back with the queen to d8, trying to defend the pawn. Opponent sacrifices the knight there very smartly because after I take, opponent can sacrifice another piece because my king is still in the center. I take with the bishop, opponent takes with the rook. And if you see now, uh, white is 8.3 ahead uh, and it's 21. So opponent in the last four moves have gained a lot of momentum. Uh, and that's because some uh, not proper movements in between. Um, the middle game could have been a lot better. Uh, but uh, I, would, I just went through with the flow thereafter. I took on the, pawn, uh, the rook with the, uh, uh, with the pawn. And then opponent gives a check with the bishop. That was strange because open can simply take with the queen and my king uh, would be in center. Uh, at best, what I can do is get some knight in between maybe. And then you again have the bishop coming in. You have the rook coming in. My king would have remained in the center. And if you see open is 20.6 ahead here and can do anything about the situation, but chooses uh, to give a check with the bishop, uh, which was strange, bishop to g6 allows me to have escape square towards the d7. That's what I do then. And now if you see, it's back in control. The game is not going anywhere far from me. And opponent does take the knight. Uh, yes, that, that did happen. But then I went with queen f6, which is going to hit the pawn as well sometime soon. Uh, I have the move pawn forward coming to tell, trap the bishop here. So opponent had to do something about it, but opponent decides to place rook. On to e6, trying to maybe exchange queens if option, uh, opponent gets the chance to. Here I went with rook to f8, uh, trying to attack the f2 pawn now with my queen and rook ba battery lining up. Uh, then opponent uh, gets the rook on to e2, trying to defend the pawn. And I went with bishop g6, with, uh, pawn to g6, which traps the bishop. Uh, and opponent had to let it go, but I didn't do that. I first thought I'll exchange uh, queens off the board. I got my queen onto f4 and we trade off here. Uh, I wanted to take control of the game because uh, you don't want to take a risk when you are already under pressure. So I thought of just exchanging the queens first. Opponent saves the bishop, but what it gets is uh, I again line up my rook onto g8. And then opponent places bishop back and here is pawn forward finally attacking the rook and the pawn which loses uh, the, the pawn on g2 with a check. Opponent goes sideways. I take another pawn. Opponent tries to just cut down on the other rook which might be coming on to g8 then. So opponent tries to place bishop on to g4. Again hitting the e6 pawn as well with the rook and the bishop. But here comes a knight to d8, defending the pawn first, not rushing in uh, for the attack, not going for the kill, focusing on the defense for now. It's it's very important what time you want to attack and what time you can wait and hold on to that attack. That's very important chess. Make sure that you make the right decisions on the right time. So I defended the pawn first. Now there's no threat. Opponent now tries to get my rook out of the way by placing uh, bishop to g3. Here comes the check. Opponent has to move the king. Uh, and that was the only square for the opponent. And then pawn forward means uh, suddenly I am very close to queening. Opponent can take and lose the bishop and maybe the game as well very soon because 
आई विल हैव टू रुक्स एंड अ नाइट फॉर अ रुक एंड अ बिशप रिमेनिंग हेयर मैं अपन ट्राइज टू किक माई रुक अगेन बाय अटैकिंग इट एंड हेयर कम्स द फाइनल मूव मूव रुक टू ई वन नाउ रुक टू ई वन इज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग हियर द थिंग इज दैट ऑपन कैन सेक्रीफाइस द बिशप आई विल टेक बैक विद द एपॉन so say opponent uh, the best move as per the computer is to uh, take on here and if does that does happen why is it not going in yeah goes and i can take back and here if opponent does take again i can still take back with my pawn uh, which would get me the queen opponent can take and and this even after the opponent does take i'm pretty good here uh, i have rook and a knight for a bishop and that's completely winning end game i can simply just go back with the rook and then give couple of checks take some pawns and easily win it from there so i hope you like the video do let me know your feedback keep watching and sharing do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now and i shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content again thanks for your time take care bye bye